Hi, my name is Joyce. Hello, I'm Amber. And um, we are your host for today. So we are accompanying you this Friday afternoon all the way till 5 p.m. Yes, and um, welcome to One Voice where we discuss stories of hope, unity, and transformation. One Voice Radio is a broadcast arm of One Voice Magazine, which you can easily find online at www.onevoicemagazine.com. And um, One Voice Radio, in partnership with UCAP Radio, is streaming on our Facebook page, okay? So if you're watching this, I know that you're on our Facebook page, but um, if you want to find us, if you want to find out more about us, you can find us on Instagram. Um, just search the, just search One Voice Magazine and on YouTube, which is What Mag Inc., okay? One Voice Magazine also has a group page on Facebook where we share what God is doing in our lives and even in our society. So we're inviting you to be a part of it. It's on private, but you can look it up. It's One Voice Magazine group. We can talk about stories that give hope, stories that inspire transformation, and stories that unite us. We can also share our personal testimonies in the group page. Yeah, definitely. You know what? Um, well, since I'm part of One Voice, there's part of my stories, my testimonies that I also wrote and posted online. So if you guys want to write or want to tell us your stories, you're free to do so. And um, every month we have a um, theme, okay? So right now, um, for the month of June, what we have is Breakthrough. And um, last week, Gigi and Janina talked about financial breakthrough. But this afternoon, we're on a diff we're still on breakthrough, but um, kind of different, okay? But especially in the area of identity. So today is a special day, not just for Amber and I, because this is our mm -hmm. first time to do radio, okay? So if you can see, we're a bit nervous, but by God's grace, we're doing fine. And um, it's special, not because it's our first time, but also because we are celebrating the 122nd day of our independence as a nation. So happy Independence Day! <laughs> Yes, the Philippines is celebrating its Independence Day today. And can I just say how our feature story for this week is very apt for Freedom Friday. It's very timely and it's also very fitting that we released a story this week entitled From Rape Victim to Redeemed Victor. So it's the story of our brother Ronnie Ventayan. And in his story, we see that God is a God who redeems us from our past. And also God is a God who reconciles us to himself. And he is a God also who restores us to our identity. So indeed, God is a God of many, many, many breakthroughs. He is a God who frees us from our sin and circumstances. And it isn't only that he sets us free from, from the entrapments of sin and unfortunate, uh, you know, life circumstances. But also he sets us free to live in abundance. As it says in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Yes, Ate, I, I uh, totally agree with you. And I, I remember I uh, read this quote when I was actually researching on our topic. And um, the quote says, brokenness is often the road to breakthrough, so be encouraged. Um, I think it was Tony Evans who said that. And um, I think this is what makes breakthrough really beautiful. It, it, it's what makes breakthrough really special. This is exactly why we love stories, lalo na yung mga underdog, yung talo na, tapos nanalo pa, yung mga ganong klase ng story. Just like how it was with Joseph. You know, he had a dream. He had an identity. He was a son. And, um, but he was separated from his father, his family. Remember, one day, you're tagapagmana, and then the next day, you're the servant right so that's what he went through and um worse he even became a prisoner and he could have stopped believing especially since it was a dream that actually led his brother to hate him which kind of led him to where he was but you know what he didn't stop believing and um i guess it's uh it it calls for us to ask you know these questions are there things in our lives be it in the past or in the present that separates us from god or are or in the separation what are the lies that we believe or we tell ourselves what are the lies that other people tells us or sometimes even the lies that we tell ourselves right or what are the things that 
God has planted in our lives that we stop believing in and what caused us to stop believing. Yes, let's look at Luke 15, chapter. Look, chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. So this is the famous story. We could also say it's the infamous story of the prodigal son. So in connection to the questions that Joyce just said, um, let's look at Luke 15. So I'm not going to read. It's 21 verses, but I'm going to summarize it. So if you are listening to us or if you're watching us, you could look at Luke 15. You can run through with us. And then if you have time, you have free time, read it on your personal time. It's a wonderful chapter. So in Luke 15, there are two sons, the older and the younger. So the younger son asked his father for his inheritance. And even if the father was still alive and well, he gave the inheritance to the younger son. The younger son left for a distant land and there he squandered his inheritance in reckless giving. In re re reckless living, sorry. Then a famine came and when the younger son had spent his inheritance he got to the lowest point of his life where he wanted to eat the food of the pigs that he was standing and in the culture of the jews like one of the dirtiest or maybe one of the lowest animals for them are the pigs the swine so pigs, yeah. for the yeah so for the younger son to desire to eat what the pig is eating it says that he's like at the rock bottom of his life of his life like it's he's really down at the rock bottom he's at the pit he's so low in life so it was at this point of his life that he came back to his senses and he decided to return home so he made up a speech to tell his father so so that he can convince him to accept him or to for him to be part of the household again so in his made up speech he was practicing or he was rehearsing that he wanted his father to hire him as a hired servant not for him to come back as a son anymore, but as a hired servant. So from there, the younger son journeyed home. So as he was nearing their estate, the father sees the younger son and he runs to him. So he restores him to their household as a son, not as a hired servant. So, you know, it's a fascinating story, the story of the prodigal son in Luke 15. Um, when I was younger, I used to think that the main character in this parable is the prodigal son. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't I? He's the title character. Yeah. Usually it's the parable of the prodigal son. So I would think naturally yeah. that he is the main character in the story. But uh, as I grew up, <laughs> thank God I grew up, um, I found out that the, that the main character in the story is actually the father. So, yeah, what do you think about that, Joyce? Well, um, for me... I actually used to think that he is actually the main character of the story. But you know what? Like growing up, we get to learn that sometimes the story is not just about one person. Like there's the, always the other side of the coin. And um, and I think um, reading through it as I grow up, it, it gives me more knowledge on how I should view the story, not just from the prodigal son's point of view, because surely every one of us knows how mm -hmm. It feels like to be far from God and to run back to God. But I guess it also helps us to see or look at the story from the father's point of view. I mean, imagine how it must have been for the father to 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 do what he did in the story, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Um, the father in the story paints a picture of God as our father. I mean, you know, he the the father in the story is a perfect prototype of God the Father who loves each and every one of us. And mm -hmm. you know how timely it is that next week it's Father's Day. So we're talking about the main character in the story of the <laughs> prodigal son. <laughs> okay, three things that struck me in the chapter, in the story of the prodigal son rather. So firstly, the father redeemed his son from the mud. So this was literally and figuratively. Like I look at I look back at the verses and I just see the younger son filthy, muddy, and dirty because he was already living at the rock bottom of his life. Like he lost his inheritance, he had no money, he had nobody, and he wanted to eat the food of the pig. So that tells me he has no clothes, you know, no proper clothes to wear. He's probably living in the streets, sleeping in the streets. So it sort of tells me that the son doesn't look as presentable, like, mm -hmm. you know, not clean enough. And then so famine came and nobody helped him. He needed to work so that he could eat. And in the end, he wanted to eat the food that the pigs ate. It is from this state that the father redeemed him. Well, right? It wasn't um, just a state of, you know, not just in the sense that 
he was redeemed because he was dirty, but that kind of living that he had. Well, actually, yes, um, you're right. And I think um, one of the best thing about this story tells is that sometimes regardless of how hopeless you feel or how far gone you are, you can always go back to the father like like what the son did and one of the things that i really loved about this story as well is um when the father ran and hugged this uh and had the the prodigal son you know the the father hugging him was an act of protection as well because if other people got to him first they could have stoned him to death so um if we were to actually go back in the old testament and read through deuteronomy 21 18 I'm, yeah 21 18 to 21 although i'm not gonna read everything but um if you just read it through you would see there that if a son is stubborn or rebellious you know and will not obey their father and their mother then it actually merits the father and the mother to bring their son on the gateway of the hometown where people can actually stone their the the, the son to death for being rebellious and what the son did is actually super super rebellious in their culture asking for your father for your inheritance before your father is dead is is like asking your father to to be dead na lang. it's it's such a horrible thing especially in their culture but you know the father um well i cannot speak for the father but i think that the father knew that if other people were to reach the son before him first, the other people could have punished the son for the sins of the son. So the father actually ran and hugged the son so that he would be protected. Yeah, I also like that point of view because most of the time we look at the father running to the son as an act of, you know, when you miss someone so much, when you haven't seen someone for so long and then you just see him out of a sudden, out of nowhere, and then you automatically ran to that person. But I like also that in a way, the father tried to protect the son. That's why he ran. So can you just picture an honorable, wealthy man? And also, he wasn't wearing the clothes that we are wearing right now. He's probably wearing a very long gown or tunic. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's a say, robe. And he would lift it up. He would expose part of his legs. An honorable, mm -hmm. wealthy, estate-owning man runs to the fields and he lifts his garment just so he can run fast and, you know, to protect his son and to embrace him. And it's also one of the things that I love about the story of the prodigal son. Because when the prodigal son left, it wasn't just a separation in terms of geographical distance or a physical kind of separation from the father, but rather it was also a separation in the heart. Like once he was separated from the father's household or from the father's care, he was also separated from the father's blessings, from the father's protection, from the father's purposes. So in a way, you get alienated with yourself. Like if you were the one who ran away, if you were the prodigal son, somehow you get alienated about yourself. You don't know who you really are. You don't know whose you are. You don't know the purposes that you have for your life. And we see a hint of that when he's mentioned in Luke, chapter 15 verse 17 where he says where the verse says when he came to his senses so in a way you see that he was out of his mind he wasn't living the way that he should be or you know he was really alienated from himself somehow he was disoriented he was disoriented maybe and in verse 20 the father sees the younger son when he was a long way off and the father runs to him so this is the part of Luke 15 that makes me tear up every time, you know, I realize the gravity of what the father did. Like the father embraces him and kisses him in all his filth, in all his dirt, in all, with all the mud on his face or on his neck. So mm -hmm. can you just imagine how he probably smelled like? But yeah, the father embraces yeah. him and he kisses him. The father reconciles the younger son to himself when he embraced him and when he kissed him. And the reconciliation wasn't just with him. It was also to the household. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, because um, when, when the father came out to meet the prodigal son, he actually, you know, gave uh, a signet ring to the son back. He gave him a sandal and uh, a robe. So, so technically what the father did is he did not just, you know, came out and embraced his son but he actually reinstated his son to being a son because 
if we are to read the story, di ba, yung son, parang, babalik ako kahit maging katulong na lang ako. Even if I'm just a yeah. servant, it's better to be with my father. But he was, he he came to the father thinking na magiging servant na lang ako. But you know what? The the mind of the father is different. The the mind of the father said, no, you're coming back not as a servant, but as a son. Yes, I love the term that Joyce used. She said reinstated. I love that. And you know, this is also one of the <laughs> highlights of Luke 15 because the father restored his son to his identity when he gave him the robe. It wasn't just an ordinary robe. The Bible says it was the best robe. So the father got the best robe for his son, put it on him, put a signet ring on his hand, and then put sandals on his feet. And in their culture, like I think the slaves are the ones who walk barefoot. right? So for someone, for the father to give his son that pair of sandals, he was like saying, you're not a slave anymore. You're my son. You're my son. You're not coming back as a slave, even if that's what you wanted to. You're coming back as a son. You're coming back as my son. So, so much tears <laughs> in my heart. Nothing on this segment. And <laughs> I know, I know. And and um, one of the things that actually the the I was reminded of when I was reading this story is um, if you are actually to go back, you know, I remember I was listening to one of Kristen Kane's sermon, and then she had this sermon where she said that the only thing that, that one of the things that God doesn't want us to feel ever is shame. But that's the very same thing that the enemy wants us to feel whenever we sin. The enemy wants us to feel shame. The enemy wants us to feel ashamed of ourselves, of what we did. But um, the good thing here is that if you actually go back to Genesis, you know, when Adam and Eve first sinned, sobrang nahiya sila sa sarili nila, sa lahat ng skonong nagawa nila, their eyes were opened, and they realized that, oh my God, we sinned. But the first thing that God did is God actually created, uh, you know, cloth to to cover their nakedness, to cover their shame. And, and um, I remember when I was going through this story, the Lord kind of reminded me that, you know what, when I put this robe on my son, the prodigal son, okay, it was also me trying to cover the shame of what my son did. So it's not just God restoring the identity, it's also God covering our shame. Yeah, it's very true. I love that part. When you think about the robe covering your shame, covering your filth, uh, it does many things in a person's heart. <laughs> it also reminds me of the yes, story of Mephi Boshet. Yeah. So, yeah, just a short segue. Mephi Boshet was, I think he was lame, but he was invited at the table of David Pete every day. And it sort of like harkens to eating at the father's table where your all your lameness is covered because you can't see the feet from the table. So, yeah, in the same way, it, it just reminds me of that idea where the father covers our sin or where the father covers all our lameness or all our filth, all the things about ourselves that we think are unworthy or undeserving or unlovable. So let's talk about our feature story this week. So it's entitled From Rape Victim to Redeemed Victor, where we see the breakthrough happen in the area of identity. When I interviewed Brother Ronnie, I was asking him a bunch of questions and I kept using the term LGBTQ plus personalities to define or to refer the LGBTQ plus personality. So he suggested that I use SDIs instead of LGBTQ. And I asked him, what does SDI mean? And he said, sexually disoriented individuals. He explained to me that his disoriented like he he explained to me that his experience being a homosexual was a lie about his identity the lie caused him to be disoriented about himself so to be set free from that lie that he lived was a breakthrough of great sorts and i believe it was very pivotal in his journey that the lies were exposed and that the reality of who he is and how god made him to be were revealed and you know when i think about the theme of breakthrough I also can't help but think about conflict, struggles, and oppression. And somehow, when we look at it from uh, from the biblical perspective, conflict and struggles and oppression is the breeding ground for breakthroughs. 
there will be no breakthroughs without conflict. There will be no breakthroughs without struggles, without oppression. And we see this theme recurring in the lives of the great, great heroes in the Bible that we look up to. David, Joseph, John the Baptist. You know, all of them experience conflict. All of them experience struggles. All of them experience oppression of some sort. And, you know, breakthrough thrives in the hard and difficult places of life. It's as if something has to break, whether it's chains of slavery, walls of isolation, yokes of struggle, so that something comes through or something or most likely someone has to be set free. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does. <laughs> Actually, it actually makes a lot of sense. Because like what I said here, diba, like um, sometimes, or that's that's what actually makes breakthrough really beautiful. Because if you did not struggle, if, if you just get everything, you know, that you wanted, if you just achieved everything and, and um, there was no challenge, there's no problem, there's, yeah, so this conflict, there, this struggles, this, these oppressions, then it wouldn't make sense to call it a breakthrough because you need to break first before you come through. And mm. and um, I think um, this conflict, this struggles or oppressions that you are referring to actually has a, a deep root, um, especially to us as an individual. And um, well, I don't want to spoil our, our, our watchers, um, especially how, with how good Brother Ronnie's story is. But okay. Um, if you guys would um, read through his article, then you would see that sometimes parenting is so important. And um, although we cannot always blame it on the parents, of course, <laughs> but at some point, how we grow up, okay, what we think about ourselves, how we how we think, how we interact with others, it actually um, sometimes has an um, how our parents were or how we grew the culture that we grew up in actually impacts us a lot. And and I I for example, okay, so I'm not gonna spoil you guys. I'm gonna I'm not gonna tell you everything about Brother Ronnie's story so you can go to our website and read it. But I'll give you an example. I myself I remember um when I was um in my mother's womb, my mom and dad um were having a trouble with their marriage. And um, it was shortly after I uh, came to this earth, hooray, <laughs> I'm here, that they actually hooray. got separated. And my mom went to our province with me and my two other siblings. And my dad was here in Manila with my other siblings. And, and although I was still a child then, but you know how doctors would say now, while you're, while you're in the womb, you also get to feel what your mother feels. And, it somehow affects you. I think at some point it actually affected me when I was a child. I remember every time that I wake up and not see my mother on my side, I would immediately think that anyone and apple. That's that's my first and initial reaction. If I wake up and I did not see my mom beside me, my first reaction would be to cry and think that I've I, I I've been um, abandoned. That's that's how it was for me. But at the same time, um, I think um, it's not just the culture that, that we grew up in. It's not just how our parents are. And again, I, <laughs> I, I don't want to stress this enough, but I think that words also is very powerful in, in, in shaping our identity. Okay? So um, it says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And... Um, Again, guys, because I don't want to spoil you and I want you to read through this really, really good story. So I'm going to give a personal example, okay? So um, I remember since I, I already told you that what happened with my childhood. So technically, I grew up insecure, although some of my friends would not think that way because I'm always all smiles and I, I look like I'm confident. But no, <laughs> that's a different story. But but um. So I wasn't really uh, the confident girl. I, I didn't think much of myself. But I remember that we have this neighbor in um, shout out po kay Don Kali. I call him Don Kali. But he, whenever I would pass by our street, he would always tell me, like, I'm pretty, but not, you know, in a bad way. He's like a father. Like he's like a, a father, second father, <laughs> a neighborhood father for me. So he would always say. 
that I'm pretty, that I'm masipag, or, you know, just random compliments. Every time I pass by, like, every time that he's there and I pass by, he, he will never fail to give me random um, you know, comments, random encouragement like that. And I remember that as time goes by, it actually helped me a lot with my confidence, how I saw myself. And and then, I mean, that's just a word from my neighbor. What if you, what what, what are the words that, that the people closest to you tells you? What does your mother tell about you? What does your father tell about you? What does your brothers and sisters tell about you? But most importantly, what does God has to say about you? And I, I I think that's that's um actually two of the factors that 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 plays a big role in our identity, the culture that we grow up in, but at the same time the words that we hear growing up. Thank you for sharing and, um, your story, Joyce. <laughs> so there, I, I just didn't want to spoil the, the how good brother's <laughs> Roddy's story is. I think people would love it if they if, if they would read it for themselves that's why yes, i just gave a personal example but later we'll be able to hear directly from brother ronnie actually the time that you are waiting for is happening in a few seconds because <laughs> we are having <laughs> brother ronnie ventain join us for a table talk so brother ronnie are you there so brother Hello, ronnie, he is the one. good evening oh. everyone and good morning to the united states and every part of the world <laughs> because hello, I believe, brother ronnie. yeah hello hi kuya ronnie hello i will just read some of your credentials po so that i can formally introduce you na excited ako na una yung na una kitang tinawag instead of introducing you first it's okay. so anyway brother ronnie he is one of the of Christ, the History Maker Church. He is a redeemed and proud SDI. He is a cell group leader. He's also a campus minister to Obando National High School. And last but definitely not the least among his credentials, he is a child of God. So let's all welcome Brother Ronnie Ventayan. Welcome po, hello, Brother Ronnie. Hello, hello. Good welcome evening, guys. Po. Ayan, good evening to all the listeners and viewers. I am so blessed and it's a great privilege and honor to glorify the Lord. Ayan, talagang I exert effort despite of not having Wi-Fi in the house. Talagang I search for the house. <laughs> <laughs> praise God. <laughs> praise God for your yes, life, brother. God. Thank you for saying yes to this interview. Yeah, of course. It's a great honor and privilege to be part of uh, ito sa One Voice, glorifying the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yeah. Amen. And you Amen. know what, Kuya Roni? I, I remember nung una ka tang na-meet, grabe, I was, I was really encouraged by your story. And, and uh, I know, um, I, actually, it's the first time for me to to meet someone like you okay again don't want to be a spoiler but um just to give you guys uh, a brief background um kuya ronnie here um if you were to read his story um used to be an sdi before but not just that um he actually is it okay for me to say what what you did what what line of yes, work you okay. were in before? go ahead so he um, actually was um, in cyber sex, and yeah. as an uh, as a Christian youth, it's the first time for me na makakilala po ang tulad niyo. And I remember just being so encouraged about it, and I had a lot of questions. And I think that the questions that I have is the questions that ano po itatanong din ng mga ta- ng mga batang ng ba- mga youth na katulad ko. Natin. So, um, is it <laughs> yes, okay for me natin. to ask you a few questions about your life? <laughs> Yeah. So, um, Kuya Ronnie, I um, I just wa- wanted to ask, what is it like to be a believer and a follower of Jesus, but at the same time, ha- you know, have this um, sexually disorientation? Well, as a followers of Christ, it's it's a really big help, no, lalo na pag you know who is your following. Pag alam mo, when you know who is your following, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, 
that is really a big help for me no, to walk in my journey, to walk every day with all the temptation all around. So, merong, merong ka pa rin peace. You have a peace. And you know that there is a protect, uh, protection coming from the Lord who, who kung, kung sino yung sinusundan mo. So, napaka, napakalaking tulong talaga as a followers of Christ, as a believer, yung nilalakaran mo, alam mong may patutunguhan. Alam mo na may mabuting mangyayari. And as a, yung, yung SDI, yung nararamdaman ko, actually, uh, nag-aarise lang siya if I neglected my commitment to the Lord. So as long as that there is a consistency of serving God, following Christ, no, the, the, the flesh or the, the SDI, uh, I mean, the desire, no, nawawala talaga siya. So napakalaking tulong yung consistency of walking uh, in a righteous way of following Christ. Okay, well, bago yung po nakilala si um, Jesus Christ, of course, before you had an encounter with the Lord, um, would, I mean, how, how did you transition or how did you change? Is it possible? Is it necessary? Kailangan ba? Like, for example po, kunyari ako, um, na meet, I had an encounter with the Lord and um, let's say that I also have a, you know, sexual identity crisis in my life. Is it necessary for me to actually change or is it possible for me to actually change? Um, I think this is a good question to ask kasi baka may mga ibang tao and they don't know if they can change. Kasi again po, um, sometimes when kapag nandun ka sa isang lugar and nandun ka ng napakatagal na panahon, you, you, you think na, ay hanggang dito na lang ako, di na magbabago. But I, I think it's it's good for other people to hear from you, directly from you, if it is possible and if it is necessary and how, how were you able to do it? Ayun, so, be, yung change na sinasabi, no, na, uh, it, will, uh, it will goes naturally because the natural result of coming to know Jesus as the Lord and Savior, Savior is changed once we surrender to Christ. He changed us, as he say, no, sabi sa Ezekiel, basahin ko, no, sa Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, God is the one who gives us a new heart. So we cannot change ourselves. We cannot change everything. Apart from the Lord, apart from the Lord, wala na tayong magagawa. But, God is so gracious, God is so merciful, and His abundance is talagang napakalawak talaga. Nung sinabi niyang, I will give you a new heart, actually, I never forced myself, or even my pastor did not force me to change, to cut my hair, yung mga physical uh, no, appearance or outcome. Hindi ako talaga finors. Talagang sumunod yung heart ko. It was really a everyday excitement kung ano yung gagawin ng Lord sa akin every day. So, yung pagbabago, no, natural lang yan na mangyay. I, uh, Naaalala ko, meron akong kaibigan, tinanong niya ako, sabi niya sa akin, kasi he was a, he was a SDI or slash LGBT na sinasabi no, ng marami para makarelate po sila, no, na kay, bakit kailangan mong baguhin ang sarili mo dahil sa pananampalataya mo? Then I reply him, sabi ko sa kanya, as far as I remember, I did not change myself. But the love of God transform, transform me from glory to glory. So, nangyari lang yan nung tinanggap ko yung pag-ibig ng Lord sa buhay ko. Because being a, being a SDI, naniniwala ko na yan ay pinakamalungkot na tao. Kasi yun yung na-experience ko. Though I have anything, I have everything, but still, no, dumating pa rin ako sa point na... I need to cut my wrist. Kailangan kong tumalon sa first floor ng bahay namin. Kailangan kong tumalon sa ilog. Kailangan kong iuntog ang sarili ko para mamatay ako. So, 
thank God and I praise God because change is happen when you truly accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Father, as your Savior. And that's everything. Wala ka nang hahanapin pa. Yung pagbabago, nagsisimula lang yan. Pag totoo mong tinanggap ang Diyos sa buhay mo. Wow, grabe. Uh, I mean, yung nakausap ko po kayo before, I didn't know that you actually, you know, tried a lot of times to to end your life. But thank God, nandito pa rin po kayo. Grabe po yung grace ng Lord sa buhay niyo. And I, I um, sabi niyo po kayo na from glory to glory. So, is it safe to say that that an encounter with the Lord um, did not change you overnight? But but yes. it's a gradual change. Yeah, it's so, definitely it's definitely it's a process. Talaga. It's a long process. But I believe that it depends on our willingness if we want to change, if we want God help us. Because I I I have my disciples, I have my SDI redeemed disciples that nakita ko na parang ang bagal ng growth, ang bagal ng paglago. Then, Lord, sabi ko, bakit ganun? E parehas lang naman kami. And then the Lord told me, look at their heart. If there's an, any reservation into your heart, if, if you're not allow God, if you're not willing to, to God enter into your life, in the part of your life that holds you in your past, mabagal yung pagbabago. Kaya naniniwala ako, it is our willingness the Lord is very gentle. Hindi niya, hindi kanya pipilitin or even manipulated or even control your life. Because that is the freedom that God given to us eh. Yung freedom. Para makita kung talagang mahal mo si Lord. The, all I did is just, mm-hmm. Lord, I allow you. Change me and I will obey. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, grabe po. Um, Napakaganda talaga itong story niyo. Pero I'm curious lang po ako ha. Nung una po kayong umattend ng church, um, did, how did you feel? Or better yet, paano po kung may mga ibang katulad nyo out there and they actually want to seek God, how do SDI Christians see their place in the church? Naniniwala ako that our testimony of the restored SDI is powerfully reveals and proves God's unconditional love and mercy. The life story of the restored SDI is clear proof that God is mighty. Walang tinatangi si Lord. No matter what uh, what you are situation is, ano man yung kasalanan mo, matindi man yan, ang yun yung pinaka nagustuhan ko sa Panginoon eh, na niyayakap ka niya even in your in- iniquities, kahit madumi ka, niyayakap ka niya. The fact that so many SDR around the world continue to be restored in Christ, it is a clear message to the postmodern world that Christ is the way. Wala nang iba talaga. Kaya ako, every time that I, di ba meron akong mga live group from, from different salon, na nakikita natin yan. No. Paano ko sila winin sa Lord? Simply, I just share what I have experienced sa Lord. Yung pag-ibig ng Lord. I never, I never, I never talk about the sin. I never talk about anything that 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 make that they may feel like un- uncomfortable. Kasi alam na nila yan eh. Alam na nila yung kasalanan. They knew it already. Pero ang hindi nila alam kung paano magmahal ang Diyos. So, ganun. Ganun lang kasimple. You know what? I've been, deci- I, I been, I been discipling some of uh, people in Canada in different places that they are struggling how they, how they win, uh, redeem SD, uh, SDI or LGBT, no, back to Christ. Lagi ko sinasabi sa kanila na don't make it complicated. All you need to do is just let your story be heard. How you encounter the love of the Lord. You don't need a lot of verses because your life itself can help them 
to feel how God is a loving God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Di masarap? Grabe. Brother Ronnie, we have a few more questions. And one of them is, is getting married in your future plans? Nako. Lagi kong sinasabi sa Lord yeah. yan. Na. And I think, ano, it... What? What? It gives encouragement. I think Joyce is experiencing a technical glitch. But uh, yeah. please carry on, Brother Ron. Your, uh, please answer the question. <laughs> uh, getting married in your future plans. Yeah, lagi kong sinasabi sa kahit kanina that I am open. I am open if there is kung will ng Lord. I know, and I know definitely that is the will of God for me to have a wife, for me to have a children, because na vision ko na yan. You know what? The, the, the best gift that I ever received to God is the vision. Na nakita ko that there is a lot of kids are playing around with me, and God told me that is your son that it's your children Kaya sabi ko, wow. wow sabi ko and i remember when i attended an encounter god retreat i i i pray to god yung yung gusto kong babae oh, sa mga listeners diyan <laughs> ang gusto kong babae lord medyo chubby talaga dinescribe ko talaga siya and it was really exciting kasi no i started to to ano to parang to desire na Lord, gusto ko makompleto yung buhay ko. I know that my my life is completed after that I accept the Lord Jesus Christ, but I know there is more. So, sabi dito, no, when an SDI restored, he does not necessarily transform into a man as the world knows how being a man. Is what happened is he revert back to God's original design for him. So, yun na nga yun. Yung back to the original design, meaning you are willing. Willing ka dun sa plano ng Diyos, no? At yung plano ng Diyos is for you to multiply. Wala namang gustong i-multiply si Lord, kundi yung mga anak niya. Amen? So, sabi dito... Amen! No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are also instances when God's plan is used to him as a bachelor, praise the Lord. So kung ano man, yung mag-asawa man ako or hindi, it doesn't matter. Ang mahalaga, no, is I am willing to have a spouse. I am willing to have a wife. I am willing to have a children. So sabi ko, Lord, ikaw na bahala, no? Pero ako, I am excited. Sabi ko nga eh, sabi ko nga kanina dun sa kausap ko, alam mo yung pinakamaganda ginagawa ng Lord araw-araw sa buhay ko. It's just, I'm, I'm, I am always excited on what God will do sa buhay ko araw-araw. Kaya talagang, ay talaga naman Lord. Thank you Jesus talaga. Ayan, so brother. sa lahat ng girls out there. <laughs> Actually, alam mo ba, naging ano ko rin yan kasi uh, I, have, I, ha, I have some girls na talagang uh, boldly na nagpapahayag ng damdamin nila sa akin. But I, I always uh, be, I, I always, I always be careful na ma, ma-deal ko sila or may i-address ko sila ng tama. It's not just uh, out of boastfulness. I know na I am not perfect. I know na hindi ako ganun kagwapo. Pero naniniwala ako na ang anak ng Diyos na nagmamahal sa kanya ay gwapong-gwapo sa paningin ng mga babaeng nagmamahal sa Diyos. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. true. <laughs> <laughs> ah, diba? So, Brother Ronnie, I have a few more questions. Um, uh-huh. Do you remember when we had the interview last January? One of the Apo. things that you told me was that uh, even at the uh, young age of six or seven, you started earning for your family. So parang it became your life goal to provide for your siblings because you were the third eldest, tama po ba? Yeah, po, so po. when you became a Christian, um, you did not just, you were not just able to provide for your siblings, but also you found the home, you found the thing that you were, you've always been looking for, yung pamilya, yung mga tao na magmamahal sa'yo. Is that correct, brother? Like, um, your purpose for your life 
it wasn't just really to provide for your family. Was it, did it became clearer nung naging Kristiyano po kayo? Totoo yan. Kasi nung hindi pa ako nakakakilala sa Diyos, ang fear ko lang ay eh, yung hindi ko maibigay, yung pangangailangan ng pamilya ko. But, Kasi nga, alam mo naman yung past life namin, it was really miserable. My mom used to use drug and he became uh, insane and he walked naked in the street. And my dad passed away so early. Tapos, I was molested by my own loved ones and we are rejected with my old relatives. No? At talagang yung takot na magutom ulit, yung takot na hindi ako mahalin, yung takot na Talagang yung hopeless, yung emptiness ay maranasan uli. Yun yung takot ko dati. But praise God when I encounter God, God reveals me na walang dapat ikatakot. When when I encounter God, God a, a few weeks or a, uh, yes, a few weeks a uh, few weeks ago, no, he encountered also my whole family. Kaya sabi ko, hindi pala kinakatakutan yung wala kang kaidin. Ang nakakatakot, yung umuwi ka sa langit na hindi nakakilala ang mga mahal mo sa buhay. And that is really, no, give me peace. Na sabi ko, Lord, no matter what happened, I am in peace because I help my family, no, to build a relationship to you. Kaya every day if you check my Facebook, Since lockdown started, we have a sun. We have a Saturday service, family fellowship at home. Sabi nga nila, bakit walang social distancing? Hindi nila alam buong pamilya ko yun, no? And talagang it's it's really blessed because even you y- yung makita mo yung yung pamangkin mo doing devotion, and your mom. And your, you know, your nieces and nephew, they are all excited to our don't watch every morning. Imagine mo every morning yun, you have to wake up at 6 a.m. to do your devotion. And then 7 a.m., you gather them, all your family, and, you know, talk about the goodness of God. And you worship together every morning. That is really a miracle. So, bakit ka pa matatakot? So, yun. Praise God. Yes, praise God. I remember also, Brother Ronnie, I think na mentioned ko sa inyo to when we were doing the interview. When I heard your story, it really very evident for me that the love of God for us is so much bigger than anything we can ever face in life. Yeah. There's no place on earth where we where He can't find us, and there's no dark life that He cannot illuminate. So, and in being a God of breakthroughs. He breaks through in many areas of our lives and that needs and demands breakthrough. So that's just one of the things that I really saw when I had the interview with you. It was such a blessed time with you. Brother Ron, I have one last question for you. Um, yeah. What message do you want to give to SBIs or, or to the LGBTQ people? Yeah. Is there something that you want to tell them? Okay. I just want to tell them that God love us no matter what happened. No matter what situation we are into, the Lord is willing to embrace you all. The Lord is willing to to love you all unconditionally or to love us unconditionally. It's hard for me to 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 say that they are never belong to the LGBT because I know na for now, hindi po nila maiintindihan. Pero ito lang ang isang pwede nilang maintindihan. Mahal sila ng Panginoon. At sila'y anak ng Diyos. No one or no eh, no one or no thing can disqualify us na maging anak ng Diyos. Even in our sin. Because as long as we're still living in this world, there is a hope. And the hope comes from the Lord. Kaya ako, no, ang maipapromise ko sa fellow LGBT or SDI, or even in the entire people of the world, na I will stand firm. I will stand firm and I will keep my faith grow and grow para makita nila 
na yung Diyos na pinaglilingkuran ko, yung Diyos na nagpapasaya sa akin, yung Diyos na kumumpleto ng buhay ko ay buhay. At yung Diyos na nagbago ng buhay ko ay pwede rin magbago ng buhay ng maraming tao. All we need to do is just stand firm. All we need to do is just no matter what happened, hold into a promise, hold into the promise of the Lord. Dahil yan lang yung pangako na ni minsan hindi mapapako. That's why I learned to focus on what God given to me, on what God has done to me, on what God promises to me. And that almost matter talaga naman. Kaya ngayon, no, I, at yung pinakamaganda pa doon, no, dito sa lugar namin, no, every time nakikita nila ako, they never feel condemned. They feel love. Kaya nga nung nagkaroon ng, ano, nung nagkaroon ng ayuda from, from the SDI community or LGBT, kasama pa rin ako sa binigyan. So, that is the proof na nung makita nila yung transformation na ginawa sa akin ng Panginoon, they feel love instead of condemn or instead of rejected, rejection. Kaya ayun, I am looking forward, everyone, especially all the LGBT community. You are welcome. No, the Lord is welcome. All of us. No, kaya yun lang sa kanyang pag-ibig. Glory to God. Thank you, mga sister. You are so beautiful. You are all beautiful. Actually, thank you din po. Actually, I think Kuya Roni, yung isa sa pinaka magandang na tutunan ko sa story niyo po. Oh, hindi ako may iyak, okay? <laughs> is that no one is too far gone. Kahit na feeling mo sobrang layo mo na sa Panginoon. Minsan kasi ganyan yun tayo, ganyan po tayo. Ako personally, kahit na lumaki ako na nagsa Sunday school, pupunta ng church, pero minsan ay, kapag nagkakamali ako, minsan may isip ko na I feel like I'm too far gone. Parang alayo ko na. Tapos minsan, the enemy would tell us lies like, matatanggap pa ba ako ni Lord kahit ganito ako? Nakakaya naman lumapit sa kanya. Actually, I think one of the reasons why a lot of people are not in the church is not because they don't want to be in the church, but because they're afraid of going back to God. Kasi nahihiya sila. Nahihiya tayo. Kahit ako, I, I experience that. Sometimes, alam kong dapat lalo ako lumalapit kay Lord, pero nahihiya ako. So parang, ganun, parang imbis na lumapit ka, tagtago ka na lang. Pero, if if there's one thing that I, I want to leave with, with our listeners sa mga nakikinig po ngayon, it's this. God already knows everything about you, about me, about everyone. Lahat ng Amen. pangit at magandang thoughts, lahat ng pangit at magandang bagay na nagawa natin, alam na ni Lord yan, okay? So yeah. instead na tumakbo ka sa kanya, na lalo ka pang mapapalayo, lalo ka pang mapapahamak, alam naman na niya lahat, hindi e, tumakbo ka na lang. <laughs> Amen. Actually, yan yung ginagawa ko sa sarili ko lagi, kung sabi sa sarili ko, Joyce, kapalag mo na lang yung mukha mo. Lumapit ka ulit, lumapit ka ulit, lumapit ka ulit, lumapit ka ulit. Kahit ilang beses ka madapa ang importante, lumapit ka ulit. Kasi sabi nga sa word of God, nothing can separate us Amen. from the love of God. Diba po? Tsaka isa so, sa maganda doon, tsaka i-add ko lang po ito, no? isa sa maganda doon is we know our stand before God the Father. Sino ka ba sa harapan ng Diyos? No? A person's identity is defined by who his father is. And our father is a God, and you are a child of God. Ano man, Amen. yung maging kasalanan mo, yung tatay natin sa langit, ay handa tayo itayo palagi. Kaya ako, every time that I stumble, mas doon ko nakikita na mas kailangan ko si Lord. Ay ko, Lord, mas kailangan kita. Hanggang nabubuhay ako, Lord, mas kailangan kita. No? Kaya napakahalaga yon na alam mo yung katayuan mo bilang isang anak ng Diyos. Your sin never defines you or never... De- your, I mean, parang yung kasalanan, hindi yan yung, yung magpapa, ng, magpapaalis ng, 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 ng kalagayan buong bilang isang anak ng Diyos. Kasi alam ng Diyos na nakikipaglaban ka. 
Kaya ayun, we should always know our stand. We should all we should always uh, uh we should always hold that we are a son of God, anak tayo ng Diyos, and no matter what happened, tumakbo tayo papalapit sa Diyos. Amen? Yeah. Amen. You know, that's true. Ayan. It brings so, us back again to our Devo a while ago in Luke 15. Because I'm just reminded that in many ways or in some areas of our life, sa mga buhay natin, there are seasons where we are like the younger son, where we run away from the father. Whether it's because of sin, whether it's because we're ashamed. But just the same, we run away from the love of the Lord. But I want to tell you this also as a reminder, not just to myself, but even to our listeners right now. The, father's, the Father is looking for you. He is looking at you at this very moment. And he sees you even if you are still a long way off. You know, the Father's love waited and never forgot. I'm trying to say it without crying. <laughs> but, you know, His love is waiting for you now and He has never forgotten you. So, you're never too far gone from the Lord. Amen. So yes, no one is too far gone. I should take it away because and- I might cry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, ayun po, maraming maraming salamat po ulit, Kuya Ronnie, for giving yeah. us your time. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much. Yet. <laughs> yes, you're not giving us yet, kasi babalik po kayo later. <laughs> In a bit. Okay. <laughs> yes, and, po, you'll be joining guys, us for the second interview. <laughs> uh, okay, yes. thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to wait. <laughs> thank you, Brother <laughs> again, guys. <laughs> If you really, really, really want to be encouraged, okay, again, I would encourage you. <laughs> Basahin nyo yung, yung story ni Kuya Ronnie. It will, it, it's up on our website at www.onevoicemagazine.com or you can also visit our Facebook page. You will see it there. I assure you guys, hindi masasayang yung oras nyo sa pagbabasa. You would actually really feel how, 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 Good, how gracious God has been in his life. It's such a wonderful story. And um, because of that, okay, we will have a, a short break in where um, we would like you to listen to a song by Soul Driven. It's called Pangako. And I think this song is, I know, it's um, timely sa mga, pinag, sa mga pinag-usapan natin today. Um, it's about the promise of God that sometimes kahit na mahirap, kahit masakit, okay, ho- let's hold on to the promise. And that is the promise of God. So let's listen to this music. Masakit man ang pagsubok na iyong pinagdadaanan Malayo man ang takbo Ika'y na
Ayan, so welcome back and uh, I hope na na-bless po kayo dun sa song. And if you guys want to know more about um, mga Christian songs that are originally composed by by um, our ano, Filipino Christians, ayan. I know that we love listening to Bethel, to Planet Shakers, to those songs, but there's nothing wrong with loving our own. So if you want, you can check po um, UCAP Radio's website or you can also go to their Facebook page page and um we're hope we're hoping that you're enjoying our broadcast so far and um if you've only tuned in now again you can um, visit our web page our website www.onevoicemagazine.com or you can go to instagram um search one voice magazine or on youtube what mag, what mag inc and again um like our facebook page and you can share it with your friends okay and now um i think at the um we have some Bible trivias. You have, actually, you have a Bible trivia, not me. <laughs> yes, actually, we are on the second hour of our radio program. So to start the second hour, we have some Bible trivias to share. So we're still on Luke 15. It's a Luke 15 mm -hmm. kind of day. So it's a whole chapter on redemption where we see the parable progress in terms of the number. Like the first parable, the parable of the sheep, one sheep was missing out of a hundred. And then the second the parable, the parable of the lost coin, one coin was missing out of ten. So firstly, it was one to a hundred, and then now it's one to ten. And then in the parable of the prodigal son, one of the two sons were missing. So, But, you know, just the same, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son, they were all celebrated when they were found. The shepherd celebrated when he found the lost sheep. The woman who owned... The coin celebrated when he when she found the lost coin. And likewise, the father in Luke 15, verses 11 to 32 in the story of the parable of the prodigal son, he celebrated when the younger son was found. So I would just want to read uh, the last verse of Luke 15, verse 24. It says there, because this son of mine was dead and is alive again, he was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. And likewise, verses 7 and verses 10 of Luke 15 also goes the same way. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So that's it for my Bible trivia for today. I think we're going to do some <laughs> shout out. Joy, anyone you yeah. want to shout out to? <laughs> so, um, hi, um, I shout out to our JBMSM family that actually stands for Jesus the Bright and Morning Star Ministry, our church, our local church, my second family. And um, shout out then to Makati Lighthouse. Um, it's a, it's a, a group of people who comes together and um, pray and um, for Makati City. So these people are either working in Makati or they're living in Makati. And since uh, my work is in Makati, so I get to be part of their uh, of their group. And um, 
if there's anyone watching here and um, you live in Makati or you're working in Makati and you want to find a group that you can just connect with, have fellowship with, you know, you can go and check um, our Instagram and Facebook page, Makati Lighthouse. And um, ikaw po, I think. Me, um, I want to say hi to my family in Baguio and also in my family in Cavite. So, hello, family. <laughs> and then sending you also my regards, Cavite House of Prayer. And what else? I think I want to say hello also to my TFC family. It's my church here in Cavite. And then lastly, um, I'm sending a socially distant fist bump to our One Voice family. <laughs> Also, we'd like to welcome the youngest hey, and the newest yeah, member of our One Voice family, Baby Sam Olivia. Hi, baby. We'll see you soon. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, one one of um our team from One Voice actually um just had her their first baby. So hi, Olivia yes. Sam. We're excited to see you soon when when the quarantine is over. <laughs> <laughs> Advance Happy Father's Day to. Brother Neil. <laughs> yes, and to all the fathers out there. <laughs> yes. Okay, so let's take a break before we jump into the last 30 minutes of our segment. My co-DJ, Joyce, she's performing a spoken word for us. So to accompany her beautiful poem is a song by 2216. It's entitled Tanggapin Mo. So here's Joyce with her spoken word. Be 
mo ang himig at pinig ng puso ko hinggin mo ang patulay ang buhay kung ito'y
Okay, there we have it. That is Joy's spoken word uh, with the accompaniment from 20 to 16 entitled Tanggapin Mo. So Joyce, um, do you want to share something about your spoken word? It's a really beautiful piece and it's very timely for our discussion for today. Well, actually, um, yeah, of course, I want to share something about it. I mean, alam niyo naman kung gaano kadaldal, but anyways, um, I I guess um, the reason why I wanted to um, to share this spoken word poetry is because I think it's not just me. I think marami pong katulad ko who actually questions their identity, not 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 in not the way that Brother Ronnie actually. Um, not the way like Brother Ronnie did, but I think na sometimes we question our identity in small things. Like, what what are we worth? Uh, am I really beautiful? Am I really worth it? Um, you know, because that has been my life. Actually, um, that is sabi ko, Lord, ano ang testimony ko? Kasi I grew up in church. I did not experience na malasing yung mga ganong bagay. I did not experience drug use, al alcohol use, or smoking. Kahit nga po magmura, hindi ko I mean, our father, we grew up in a, in a house where, ano, you, you cannot say bad words. So even that, I, I I didn't get to experience growing up. But I remember that that I always think, Lord, what's my testimony? Parang, Ano, anong pwede ko ma-share sa mga tao? And it was then that the Lord told me this, that anak, akala mo ang galing mo, akala mo ang forma mo, akala mo ang ganda mo, akala mo, you know, you're this and that. But are you really that or are you that because you wanted people to accept you? Are, are, are you putting on your clothes because you wanted people wanted people to tell you that you're beautiful? Um, nag excel ka ba sa mga bagay-bagay because you wanted people to think na mahusay ka? Or... Or are you friendly because you, you wanted people to accept you in their group? But then the Lord made me realize that your identity is not found in these things. It's it's not found in what you wear, in what you do, in what you accomplish, in who your friends are, in what your work is. Your identity can only be found if you start to see yourself like how God sees you. So ayun po, yun yung short story behind that spoken word and i hope that you guys were encouraged and um yeah so right now um we would like to um go to the second part of our interview session and this time okay we we would want to um call on someone who is at almost at the same age as mine because um we want to know like someone from the same age group like we how how are we battling with identity right no i mean identity is a really um something that a lot of us are going are, are questioning a lot of people are asking themselves like who am i who am i who am i and i think i i we would like to hear from one of the millennials right so um, we would like to call on Jack Reyes. He is 21 years old. He is one of the youth leaders in a local church he serves in. But um, per his request, okay, his video camera will be turned off for the duration of the interview for, preco for precautionary measures. Welcome, Brother welcome, Jack. Brother also, Jack. we'd also like to welcome like also welcome Brother also Ronnie. Brother Ronnie. So, so, Brother Jack, Jack um, Joyce has, has some, questions some questions for you. Actually, yes. we all have questions for you. <laughs> yes, Ma. Go ahead. Um, so, the um, first so the question, first question is, is, um, what is, um, the what is the biggest factor, factor in your life, in your life that, made you that made you question your identity? Your identity? Maybe I will just give uh, some backgrounds about me before. And bago po, no? Eh, yes, po. po kasi okay. yan. Eh, when I was a kid, I was being molested by my cousin and that time um nagdecide ako sa sarili ko na i isolate yung sarili ko knowing that no one will accept me anymore knowing that this kind of battle was really rare for me because maraming magjudge sa iyo eh and Yun yung pinaka fear, biggest fear ko is to be judged and to be rejected by other people. And sabi ko po sa sarili ko nun, 
uh, gagawin ko na lang siguro yung gusto ko. Hindi dahil to please any anyone but siguro po yung maging masaya na lang ako. But then again, mali yung thinking kong ganun. And nag-start yan nung high school ako. Nag-all out ako um, to the point that I na naging cross-dresser ako. <laughs> Nag, naging cross-dresser po ako. I tend to to put some makeups like that and competing some pageants like that. I tend to compete when I was a teenager. And during that time, na sa mga ginagawa ko because ang alam ko lang is hanggat wala akong natatapakan na tao, mas pipiliin ko yung ganitong buhay because I want to prove myself na hindi porkit ganito, wala ka nang mararating. Hindi porkit ganito, wala ka nang kwenta. Because I want to prove everyone na kami, yung itong gantong sexualidad, ito yung mga pinakamatatalinong tao. Like that. <laughs> ito yung pinakamatatalinong tao na nilikha ng Diyos. Like that. Ganyan po yung thinking ko. And then, nung time na po yun, nung nagkaganong-ganon na nga, sabi ko sa sarili ko, nag sabi ko po sa sarili ko na ang hirap pala ng ganitong klaseng buhay kasi walang tumatanggap sa'yo. Though meron, nakikipag-usap sa'yo, pero feeling mo walang walang gustong makipagkaibigan sa'yo. Kasi parang feeling mo parang feeling mo yung ikaw yung may sakit na kaetong. <laughs> like that. And sabi ko po noon sa sarili ko, hindi hindi ako aasa sa ibang tao. And then, nagkaroon ng time, then I encountered God's love. That was 2017. Ay, 2015 po pala. Mapares tayo. Uh, 2015. <laughs> It was 2015. We're in... Sinama ako nung isa sa mga youth namin, worship leader siya namin. And that time, I've got this, yung mga curiosity ko, in all out ko. And narin- narinig ko yung time na yun, nagkukwentuhan sila about Sodom and Gomorrah. And that time, sabi ko, ano pong meron? <laughs> If you know that story, guys, maganda po yun yung Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Andun and kasi yung ano eh, yung time na yun, sabi ko, mali ba talaga? Nag-ask na po ako sa sarili ko na, mali na ba talaga yung pagiging ganito? Wala naman ako tinatapakan ta, pero bakit parang ang sama-sama namin sa paningin ng tao? Pero ano ko lang po yun, sa mind ko lang yun. And then, that time, kasi po yung church namin, it's ano eh, para rin katulad po sa inyo, parang prophetic din siya in terms na nag- nakakakita ng vision, ganyan-ganyan. In that time, curious din ako sa mga ganon. And ang first kong nakita, sarili ko, is nakanta ako sa kanya. Ewan ko bakit. Basta unang-una ko pong nakita ang vision is nakanta po ako sa kanya. Tapos yung pastora po namin, yung time na yun, syempre, naka-make up po ako nang lagi. <laughs> lagi lang ako nandun sa church. Nakaupo lang ako. I'm willing to about him. Parang gusto ko lang dun sa likod po. Lagi kasi ako nasa likod eh. Lagi lang ako nakikinig ng mga preaching. And it's kind of weird nga sa part ko kasi lahat ng mga message na yun, talagang binubols ay yung puso ko. Talagang something is cultivating behind my heart na parang sabi ko, iba to ha. Iba to. Anong meron? And that time, I decided na to dig in, to go deeper. First encounter ko sa Lord, uh, nag-decide ako na burahin lahat po na...
kinuhin pastoran namin. Kinuha niya siya, kinuha siya tapos tinago siya sa isang Ziploc bag. Nasa kanya pa rin hanggang ngayon. Hello po. So nandiyan ka, ako nakikinig po kayo. Hello po. Nasa kanya pa rin lahat po ng mga makeups ko. And sabi ko, sarili ko noon, grabe iba to. Hindi ko, hindi ko na-imagine na magiging ganito ako. Kasi diring-diri po talaga ako, personally ah. Diring-diri po ako. Kung ako babalik sa dating pagkalalaki, ayoko, ayoko. Because that was the time na decided na rin po ako to go in Thailand and to have my surgery. Gusto ko kasi talaga ipatunayan sa pamilya at saka sa ibang tao na hindi ka, hindi perfect ganito. Wala kang mo. Then suddenly and eventually all things change. Lahat po nagbago nung nakilala ko si Lord. And nice. nung time na yon sabi ko sabi ko sa Lord na Lord Nangangako po ako na alam kong mahirap, mahirap yung ganitong pagdaraan kasi as time goes by, yes, and then yung mga victories mo but naamin ko po that there are times na nagmumulto siya. Nagmumulto siya to the point na itatest ka. But pinanghawakan ko lang na I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. At lahat 'yon magagawa ko kasi kasama ko siya. And apart from him, I can do nothing. Tapos, ayun po. Then, nagkaroon na po ng ganun, I became a worship leader na po. Sabi, nag-decide po ako na, sabi ko, grabe ka, Lord. Iba yung blessings na pumasok po sa amin kasi nung time na yun, nakapag-aral ako. To the point na walang-wala kami noon kaka-graduate ko lang po noon kasi yung time na yun, wala kam- walang-wala talaga kami. And then, nung time na nag-surrender ako sa Lord, lahat po talaga ng blessing, lahat ng window na pwedeng i-open ni Lord, talagang nag-open talaga to the point na ultimo kahit anong hingin ko sa kanya, binibigay niya talaga. Knowing na, na wala akong hawak na kahit anong amount of money, talagang may dumadating sa bahay talaga po na blessing. In that time, sabi ko, grabe Lord, totoong totoo ka. Tapos, ngayon po, siyempre, I encountered the love of the Father. Lagi ako nagde-devotion that time. Sobrang eager ko pa to know about Him. Then, ngayon po, sa mga time na to, nandito ako sa situation we're in. Para kong hopeless. And habang nakikinig ako kay Brother Oroni, nainggit ako. Nainggit ako sa kanya kasi. Nainggit ako. Hindi, hindi dahil ano ha. Nainggit ako kasi kung ano yung exact pang naramdaman ko ng time na yun. Gusto ko hanggang ngayon. Pero ngayon kasi parang struggling po ako. Pero pinipilit ko. And thankful ako and grateful ako. Kasi si hi, kay T. Amber. Si T. Amber nag-message sa akin. Sabi, that time ti Amber, yung itong mga time na to, nagihingi ako ng answer sa Lord. Lord, paano po ba ako aalis dito? Tapos bigla ako nag-message sa akin. So, <laughs> kaya sabi ko, uh, this time, pagbibigyan ko yung yung door na yung open ni Lord to know to know yung, ano, yung situation ko ngayon. Ngayon po, struggling ako. But I believe God is going to fight for me, to fight for us. Na kahit anong mangyari, sa kanya yung huling bagsak natin. Na kahit anong mangyari, uh, andyan lang siya, sa supportahan niya tayo. Yun lang po. <laughs> Salamat po. <laughs> Thank you po ko. <laughs> Ako, Ti Amber, I just... I, I, Sige po, brother. I, I just wanna advise to Jack Reyes na na yung nararanasan niya sorry to say kasi ako kasi naniniwala ako pag na neglect natin yung commitment natin and also yung commitment natin kasi yung relationship natin sa Lord eh yun yung pinakauna 
kailangan natin kailangan alagaan, natin talaga, alagaan yun. talaga yun. Pangalawa, Pangalawa yung, relationship yung relationship natin sa pastor. Natin sa pastor. You, you, have you have to build, to build a strong, a strong relationship, relationship sa pastor mo. Pastor mo. Kasi ako ganun, Kasi ako ganun even, in even in my confidential, confidential matters, matters, sinasabi ko kay pastor. Ko kay pastor. Lahat, lahat. Kaya every time na, na I get stumbled, every time na nangihina ako, every time that there is temptation, every time na parang nagiging malabo ang lahat, meron akong tatakbuhan. Una siyempre si Lord, pero pangalawa, yung tangible, which is our pastor. Kaya, pag merong mga ano, nangihina, isa lang yung tinatanong ko sa kanila, how's your devotion? So, ang sagot nila, hindi na ako nagde-devotion. See, so that is the beginning of your distraction. That is the beginning na talagang unti-unti mawawala ka sa Lord. Why? Kasi yung communication mo sa Lord, hindi mo na pangalagaan. At ang matindi pa, wala ka pang strong relationship kay pastor. Ako, personally, I build a strong relationship. Talaga intentional po yun. Kasi ma- ang pastor, maraming mga anak yan. <laughs> hindi yan pupunta sa'yo para gawin kang special. Kailangan mo una tanggapin sa sarili mo na pastor is a gift from the Lord. At binigay nila sa'yo yan para tulungan ka. So, yun. Yun yung gawin natin. Wa- ako... To God be all the glory. Since I encountered the Lord, nung natuto ko mag-devotion until now, complete devotion. And I think, yun yung malaking tulong. Pero hindi ko sinasabi na hindi ako dumat- dumaan sa down, sa up, sa down. Part kasi yan eh. Pero ang mahalaga doon, if you are still connected to to the God the Father, which is... It, which is yung devotion natin, doon tayo kinakausap ng, alam mo ba dumating sa point that I have as isolate myself. I isolate myself with God. Hindi sa mga taong hindi makakatulong sa akin. Dumating ako sa point na yun. At sinabi ko sa pastor ko, talagang I'd been honest to him na sinabi kong, I don't need a leader, pastor. I need a father na makikinig lang sa akin at mamahalin ako. Alam mo, nung time na yon talaga nag-grow yung relationship namin ni Pastor. And until now, no, nakikita ko na yun yung malaking tulong talaga. Or even your accountability leader, mahalaga po yun. Yun lamang po. Ako, um, I just wanna encourage Jack and, um, I cannot say na alam ko yung pinagdadaanan mo. Technically, I don't. Okay? Pero, um, hindi naman porket lumaki ako sa Christian family. Doesn't mean that the parang hi-hi na masyado. Yung hallelujah, hallelujah, ganyan. No. Of course, it's not like that. Pero, one of the things na natutunan ko is this. Um, God is a gentleman. He will not, um, he will not try to force you into something if you're not ready for it. Pero you need to give God the best that you can today. So when I say that you need to give God the best that you can today, katulad ng sabi ni Brother Ronnie, hindi naman palaging up. May mga, down, may mga downfalls din tayo. May mga times na kahit ako, may mga times na parang nakakatamad, nakakatamad, mag-pray, nakakatamad, mag-devotion. May mga times na parang, uh, alam mo yun, parang hindi mo alam anong gagawin mo. And may mga times na, na, ang kaya mo lang ibigay kay Lord today is, let's say, one chapter. Is to just read one chapter. Or mm. is to read at least kahit na a few verses. Kung yun lang yung kaya mong ibigay kay, kay Lord today, you give God the best that you can today. Amen. Kasi when we say best, lagi natin iniisip. I, ako, um, this is a personal testimony. Before, I would think na kailangan pag minute ko si Lord talaga bongga, may pa one hour prayer, one hour worship, gano'n. <laughs> and kapag hindi ko na hit yung, yung feeling kong best, I would feel frustrated. 
And then one time, the Lord actually rebuked me. And then the Lord told me, and the Lord brought me to the Mary and Martha story. Joyce, are you still here? So I think Joyce is experiencing um, some technical glitch. But Brother Jack, I just want to say that I think I've known you for a few years, pero it was just maybe two or three days ago that the Lord reminded you to me. Kasi Joyce and I, we've been looking for someone we can interview for the second segment of our radio program. But it wasn't just until a few days ago that um, days ago that I remembered you. So I know that the Lord has been reminding you. And it's not an accident that you're here with us. I think you are, I believe you are meant to be here. So I believe you are meant to be here. Thank Saka you, add ko lang din yung yung mga pinagdadaanan din yung mga pinagdadaanan mo Jack I believe that is a preparation mo Jack I believe that is a that is the preparation of a higher no yung dadalhin ka sa higher pick up ng calling sa iyo ng Lord kasi we are called we are called just a follower but a disciple but as a leader leader of change kaya tanggapin mo na na yung mga pinagdadaanan mo that is the process doon sa pinakamagandang paglalagyan sa iyo ng Panginoon and you should be excited of that kasi part talaga ya ako no Na, narating ko tong ganito pero hindi madali ang dai kong pinagdaanan grabe talaga as it to the point na halos mamatay ako talaga but i sabi mo nga i keep dig in talagang nakipaglab i fight the good fight of faith and then god revealed me na yung mga pinagdadaanan nating ups and down that is the prepa- that is our preparation doon sa great destiny na pagdadalahan sa iyo ng Panginoon so keep it up and keep Fighting. So thank you, Brother Ronnie and Brother Jack. So before we end our interview, can I please ask for Brother Ronnie to pray for our listeners and our viewers, and especially for those who are struggling with sexual identity, those who are, you know, you those who are experiencing the thing, the same things that you have experienced, the same things that you have gone through. So please pray for them. Pray for us, our listeners too. Yes, Lord, hallelujah, Jesus. We give you praise of all your faithfulness, Lord God. We give you praise for your for your unconditional love that we have received every day in our life. The chance, Lord, every day that you have given to us, Lord, we give you praise of that, Lord God. And I pray for all the listeners and viewers, Lord God, how you encountered us, how you give your mercy and grace to us, Lord. I declare in the name of Jesus, the grace and mercy over their life, Lord God. Sinabi mo na wala kang tinatangi, Panginoon. At lahat, Panginoon, na naghahanap sa'yo, you will encounter them, Lord God. I pray for all the viewers, Lord God, especially to the SDI Redeem, Lord God, and the LGBT, Lord. I pray for the enlightenment, Lord God. I pray for the spiritual, you, you, mabuksan yung spirituality ay nila, Panginoon. The spiritual eye, Lord God, be open, Lord God, at makita nila, Panginoon, nowadays, Lord God, na marami kaming hinahanap, Lord. Marami kaming hinahanap na kaligayahan, Panginoon. But at the end of the day, we are failed. We failed. We are failures, Lord God. But praise God for there is the Lord Jesus Christ. You are there, Lord God na masasabi namin na nagbigay ng protection, nagbigay ng totoong kaligayahan, Lord, sa amin, Panginoon. And I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, na ipaparanas mo ito, Lord, sa aming mga kapatid, Panginoon. Especially the lost people, Lord God, the LGBT, the SDI, Panginoon. Especially those people who are, who are suffering anxiety, Lord God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray, Lord, sa kay Jack, kay Amber, maging kay Joyce, Panginoon. I pray, Lord, that you will use them mightily and effectively, Lord God. Lord, they will be bold, Lord God, 
in sharing the God's truth, the truth, Lord God, sharing the love of God, Panginoon, that can transform people, Lord God. And I declare, Lord, the expansion, Lord, of One Voice Magazine, Lord God. I know that you will use it not just in the Philippines, but all over the world, Lord God, Lord, to glorify your name alone, Panginoon. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God. Lord, I bless mo and kinocover ko po ng yung banal na dugo, Panginoong Jesus, ang, ang One Voice Lord Magazine and Radio Station, the company, the staff, and all the people, Panginoon, na ginagamit mo for this, Lord. Kinocover ko po ng yung banal dugo. Ang lahat ng listeners, Lord God, viewers, Lord, kinocover ko po ng yung banal dugo. At lahat ng kanilang naging, narinig, Lord God, ay tumubo sa kanilang puso. At mag-transform ito, Lord God, sa kanilang mga buhay, Lord. It keep transformation, Lord God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Brother Ronnie and Brother Jack. Thank you for spending Freedom Friday with us. It was such an honor Thank and privilege you. to hear your testimonies. And we are continuously contending with you for your breakthroughs. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, po, Brother Jack and Brother Ronnie. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Jack. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you, po. Thank, Thank you, you, Joyce. No matter where you are. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. No matter where you are. <laughs> okay, so we've reached our final moment in our segment for today. In behalf of Joyce and our One Voice family, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for spending Freedom Friday with us. Happy Independence Day as well. So we hope you enjoyed today's episode on Identity Breakthrough. Again, One Voice Radio is a broadcast arm of One Voice Magazine, which you can easily find online. It's onevoicemagazine.com. One Voice Radio, in partnership with UCAP Radio, is also streaming on our Facebook page. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash onevoicemagazine and on our website, onevoicemagazine.com. You can find us on Instagram as well, Instagram at onevoicemagazine and on YouTube, youtube.com slash whatmaginc. Also, One Voice Magazine is a group page on Facebook where we share stories that bring transformation, stories of hope. Uh, about lives and in our society. So we're inviting you to be a part of it. It's on private mode, but you can easily search it. It's One Voice Magazine. And One Voice Magazine and radio are very open to partnerships and advertisements for organizations, companies, and churches. If you'd like to know more about how to partner with us, please get in touch by emailing info at onevoicemagazine.com. We are currently running on donations. So if this radio program blesses you and you want to give to One Voice Magazine and radio, you can give financially through our PayPal account at give at onevoicemagazine.com or at paypal.me slash onevoicemagazine. The details are on our header, so you can look it up, guys. And so there we have it. This is our Freedom Friday episode of One Voice Radio. Thank you very much for tuning in. We invite you to join us again next week. Next week, we are tackling, we are talking about breakthrough in terms of health. So it's going to be an interesting episode. See you guys.